Hey YouTube, it's Cajun DIY Diva, and today we're getting really Cajun. Some of my videos are, are making things that aren't as Cajun, but this is Cajun as it gets. We're making crawfish etouffee, and I just want to show you all the things that we're going to use to make this. I may add this or that while I'm cooking, because that's just the way I cook. And I won't show you the rest of my kitchen, because my sink is full of dishes. Sorry, but I got some hungry boys getting here in a little while, and they want to eat. And it's Good Friday, so we're Catholic, and we're going to not eat meat today, so we're just having a great meal with some crawfish etouffee. So the first thing I want to tell you about is um, you can buy cleaned crawfish tails. If you can't get this where you live, you can use shrimp. Crawfish is better. But the main thing is, see right there, it says Louisiana. Get Louisiana crawfish tails. Don't get Chinese crawfish tails. Just uh, by personal preference, I think they process them better in Louisiana. You're going to get a superior product if it's from Louisiana. Um, but there's no particular brand in Louisiana. There's tons of, pro hundreds of processing plants in Louisiana. So just get, you know, some good crawfish from Louisiana. We've got our Trinity onion bell pepper. This is bell pe I'm using these little bell peppers because that's what I have today. And I really like these. These are really tasty. You could use regular bell peppers or even green bell peppers you could use. I've got the celery, onion. We're going to put some garlic. The parsley. Got some green onions. This is for the end. We're going to top it with some chopped stuff. Um, I don't have it out yet, but I'm going to put a stick of butter, um, some flour, um, some Cajun seasoning, of course, and we'll probably put some other seasonings. And then this is seafood base. If you can't get seafood base, you can use just water, or you can even use a little bit of chicken bouillon in it. But um, this is something you probably have to order this. Um, it may have it where wherever you are. Um, so I'm going to prep everything, chop everything up, and then we're going to get started. And I'll be back. just wanted to show you that this right here, I'm chopping my celery, this right here, that is not parsley or anything. That is the celery leaves. Never throw away your celery leaves when you're making any kind of stew or gumbo or soup or whatever. Use those celery leaves because they have the most flavor. So let me continue. All right, so I got my hot, my pot heating up. It's always a good idea to preheat your pot. And right here I've got my onions and butter. And um, but I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be a butter-based dish. But I'm gonna swirl a little bit of olive oil into my pan. It's not a lot. It's just a little bit. It keeps the butter from burning, which I don't think I'm going to burn my butter because I'm really excited about this dish, but um, it'll be okay. All right. Can you see that? Okay. So I'm putting in just the onions first because I want the onions to caramelize a little bit first. Oops, there's a piece of garlic that didn't get chopped. Let me put that over here. Now, see it immediately starts to melt, and there's even a little brown happening because the pot was so warm when I put it in here. You just have to know your stove to know if your stove is going to burn the butter or not. So I'm going to go ahead and put my onions in. Butter smells incredible. I went to a cooking class with Chef Frank Brightson, who's a famous New Orleans chef, and he said that butter is a recipe, and you should always start with unsalted butter. Um, oh, there's a big piece of garlic that didn't get chopped up yet. Let me just take that out, because I don't want the garlic in yet. And so I'm just going to cook this till it starts to caramelize. Then I'm going to add in 
my other vegetables. Okay, so my onions are starting to get a few little brown edges, so now I'm going to add in the rest of my veggies. Well, not, uh, not the garlic, just the bell pepper and the celery right now. And just stir that around. You just don't even know how good it smells already. But just wait a few minutes and I'm going to put that garlic in and you really need smell vision Alright, so I'll be back when these are cooked down to the right consistency. Okay, so the veggies are about ready for me to add my garlic. You always want to add your garlic after there's a little liquid that's reduced from the vegetables in this kind of dish. All right, now stir that garlic in. Sorry about that. Just my issues with filming on my own. And I'm probably going to have to stop right now and change my camera battery. Just so many cooking issues, camera issues. Um, the next thing we're going to do, I want these to get a little bit more translucent. They're pretty good already, but I just want them cooked down a little bit more. Then I'm going to add the flour, and that's where you kind of make kind of a backwards kind of roux, because this is like I'm making a light roux. Like, um, you wouldn't make a gumbo roux this way, because it wouldn't get dark enough. You have to do just the roux and just the flour and oil to make a really dark, like, gumbo roux. But for this, where you want just a really light roux, then you can do the veggies first. So I am going to stop now, change my batteries, and come back. Okay, so new battery. My veggies are cooking down. They're looking yummy. And now I'm going to add flour. So I think for, I'm using three pounds of crawfish. I think I want to add, I'm going to start out with like a quarter cup of flour for each pound of crawfish and see if that works. That's approximately. Now, we just stir this in, and what you want to do is you want to cook this long enough so that the flour doesn't have that raw flour taste anymore. And I'm getting all the parts that flew up on the sides, and I'm going to add just a tiny bit more um, olive oil. Doesn't want to come out just because it's a little bit dry and I want the flour to cook a little bit more. This is what's going to thicken. See it's getting that little bit of browning on the bottom but you can still scrape it up. It's not like burnt or anything. And that really helps the gravy too. All this browning that's on there. Okay, so now what I'm going to add is the water. So I'm going to do about a cup and a half of water because when you, it, it doesn't seem like that much for this big stew, but oh, and look at that. See how quickly it thickened up? So there's your roux. Um, I think I'm going to need a little bit more water, but I don't want to put too much water because once I put the um, the crawfish in, a lot of liquid comes off of the crawfish. So I'm just going to do a little bit more. 
because I want that to cook a little bit more. You always want to put your seafood in last because you don't want your seafood to get overcooked. And let's see, just a little bit more water. So that's probably about two cups, actually, of water. And I think I actually might even add a little more. Because I do want it to have a little bit of a liquid consistency. Okay, so that was another half cup. The other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to season it. So, these crawfish tails are unseasoned. So, I'm going to add, start with about a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. Um, Normally, I would put time in this, but I'm all out of time. All out of time! They're going to be here any minute. So this is almost at the point where I can add my crawfish. It's nice and thick, and it's going to be really yummy. Okay, so I'll be back because I need to cut open my crawfish packs and make sure they're good and they're, they smell nice and everything, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I want to show you something that you should always do. These crawfish are beautiful. They smell wonderful. Um, I have my, my sacks that they came in. I emptied them out into a bowl, but I want to pour a little water in this crawfish bag and zhuzh it around because there's a ton of flavor in that liquid that sticks to the sides of the bag. Now I'm going to see if I can do this, pour my water into the next bag without getting it all over the place. Okay, so far so good. Now I want to zhuzh this one around. And now for my last bag. This is an important step or I wouldn't be showing it to you. Now if you used crawfish that's left over from a crawfish boil, you are going to want to not put seasoning until after you put those crawfish in because been there, done that, you can oversalt it. So I turn the heat down a little bit. And that's what it looks like. So now I'm ready to put in my beautiful crawfish tails. And here is what they look like. Isn't that beautiful? Crawfish are probably the most wonderful seafood in the world. If you've never tried them, you're missing out. You should really try them. So here we go. We're just going to add them all in at one time. And there's all this liquid left. I'm going to add a little more water and swirl that around to get those out. It is making some mag magical squishy sounds now as the crawfish start to get incorporated into the pot. There's a lot of um, 
I'm in this uh, Facebook group, and there's a lot of, uh, it's a Cajun, face, Cajun cooking Facebook group, and there's a lot of people who, I asked a question about this, there's a lot of people who um, put tomatoes, tomato paste, or tomato sauce in their crawfish etouffee, or the other thing they do is they add creamed soups, like cream of mushroom, cream of shrimp, cream of celery, which, you know, I am not opposed. I have been known to use a cream soup in my cooking, but that is not the traditional way that I learned how to make crawfish etouffee. And I think that when you use those ingredients, your cooking suffers. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I haven't been really using your recipe today, and I'm finding that it's way too thick, and I need more water. So, I'm putting some more water in, and that's basically the way authentic Cajun cooks cook. They add a little of this, a little of that, and they just see what it needs. Now, this is starting to look perfect. It's still a little too thick, so I'm going to add probably a little more water but it's starting to look really beautiful the way an etouffee is supposed to look. So I'm going to get a little more water. Um, I would say this, this pot would feed probably um, I don't know, it could feed like nine or ten people, or maybe like four hungry Cajuns. So, normally, my husband and I, I would use one pound, and we'd probably have some leftovers. Um, but I'm making more since my son's home from college, and um, he's going to want some leftovers tomorrow. So, I'm making a little bit extra this time. And just to make it really good. So I'm going to let this simmer for, with the lid on, I think, for about 15 minutes. I'm going to turn it on low. Just let it simmer. Then I'm going to taste it and see what, if it needs any more seasonings. So I'll be back. Okay, so I just tasted it, and it tastes like it needs a little bit more of the Tony Sacheries or whatever kind of Cajun seasoning you're using. I'm going to put about a half teaspoon. And I just kind of measure it in my hand. That's another part of Cajun cooking. Now another uh, spice that I use a lot is onion powder, love it, and garlic powder. I think I put enough in here this time, but um, you know if you need if it needs a little something, try a little bit of that because that's usually what'll fix your sauce. And here it is. So now I'm going to taste it again. Okay, now it's excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate it up and I'm going to show you what it looks like and how I garnish it with the parsley and green onions. Okay, so now I'm ready to plate it. Oops. So I've got my plate and i got some rice. Can you see the rice? Because it's white. Blends in with the plate. Rice. A good little scoop of rice. And so now, I'm just going to get some of this luscious crawfish, and you, I don't know if you can see this, let me show you. You want the crawfish tails to look like this. They're curled, but they're not so tightly curled. And I don't know, it's just something about Louisiana crawfish, they're the only ones that do this the right way. So here we go, let's plate it.
I'm going to put some on both sides. Put a little on top. There you go. And now I'm going to put some parsley, chopped curly parsley, parsley, that's the Cajun kind to use, and chopped green onions. And that's how you serve it. So, this is Cajun DIY Diva. I hope you like this recipe. Tune in next time.